And this video is over section 7.2, which is now the volume, the disk method, and or the washer method. Uh, the washer method is the disk method, but a special case of it. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. The disk method is to find the volume of a solid of revolution with the disk method, you use one of the following formulas below. For horizontal axes of revolution, the volume is pi, your function squared, and your function is the r, okay, so the radius. Now, once we start getting into the graphs, um, the actual problems, I can explain to you a little bit better as to what's happening in this particular case, okay? Now remember that for dx, the rectangles are vertical, and the axis of set revolution is horizontal, as it states here, which means that they're per perpendicular to each other. So for the disk method, you, the key thing to remember is that the rectangles and the axes of revolution will be perpendicular to each other, okay? Which helps because you're always given the um, axes of revolution. And depending on that axis of revolution, you'll automatically know what if you're gonna have vertical rectangles or horizontal rectangles, okay? Because they should be perpendicular to the axes of revolution. Um, so for vertical axis of revolution, you have this function here, or this formula here. Um, and again, the same thing. dy is horizontal um, rectangles, but you have a vertical axis of revolution, which means that they're perpendicular, okay? Now for the disk method, the entire region that will be revolved must touch the axes of revolution everywhere within the interval whether you have an x interval or a y interval everywhere it has to touch the line or axes of revolution um, in cases where the region does not entirely or at all touch the axis of revolution we must use what's called the washer method okay so essentially what's happening is like for example horizontal axis of revolution say the x-axis. The x-axis is a horizontal um, line. Let's say I have a function here, right? And this is the region that I'm talking about. Now that region is going to revolve around the x-axis, which means it's gonna start spinning around, okay? And as this thin sheet, if you think of it as a thin sheet, as it starts to move, it's basically gonna fill up all the space. So once it's gone all the way around, you essentially have a solid in the shape of maybe, not necessarily a sphere, maybe like an oval or like an egg shape, okay? By the time it goes all the way around, three-dimensional, okay? So it's going forward, 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 down, back, 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 up, 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 and then it comes back to the top, okay? So it is a three-dimensional rotation. Now, um, And here, your rectangles of the region are like this. The line of revolution is like this. Now, notice that when you revolve it like that, it creates a complete solid, which is the disk method, okay? However, if you take a, a graph, let's say, that looks like this, okay? And again, you want to revolve around the x-axis, okay? Notice that... And then here, real quick, if I were to complete that whole figure as it revolves around, notice that if you take one disc of it, one slice of it, um, the radius is only going to be half of that disc. So usually we just look at the original graph to find that radius, okay? And that's what that is there, the radius squared. Now, for this kind of figure, as it revolves around, it's going to actually create a really weird bowl shape, okay? So it'll be kind of like a bowl, but instead of the inside curving in, the inside curves out, okay? So it kind of looks something like this. Um, again, I'm not a fantastic artist, but imagine this as a three-dimensional figure. So it's like a bowl, but instead of concavity going inward like 
normal bowls do, it's going outward, okay? But it is like a sideways bowl. So because of that, you actually are going to use what's called the washer method, okay? Because um, this is not actually connected here. So you basically have to take the volume of just this region and not this region that's not completely solid, okay? Think of it kind of as a nut. Um, if I don't connect it at all, let's say the region is just here, and then as I revolve it around, it's going to create like a donut, okay? A donut pointy on one end and pointy on the other. And that looks more like a, a, a washer or a screw, a nut, right? Um, it has a hole in the middle, okay? And so that's the only difference between the disc method and the washer method. The disc method is when your region completely touches the line of revolution, whereas if it only touches it for some of the function, like here at just one point, you're gonna use the washer method. Or if it doesn't touch the line of revolution at all, then you're going to use the washer method, okay? Now when they talk about um, this here for the washer method, this being the outer radius and little r being the inner radius, you really have to look at it with respect to the line of revolution, okay? So as this is going around and around, this would be the outer radius, okay? The inner radius would be this here. And so you're basically taking the whole solid and then subtracting the whole out of the volume, okay? That's essentially what you're doing. Whereas it's a little bit different if I have my line of revolution up here, right? And let's say I have my figure here, my graph. This is my center. As I go around it, that's the center. So this is actually my um, outer radius. And then the hole is my inner radius, which is that there, okay? So it really depends on where your center is. Your center is that line of revolution. So this can get a little bit tricky. You've got a lot of things to remember here. One thing is that if you're using disc or wash method, whichever way your axis of revolution is, whatever you're revolving around, your rectangles are gonna be perpendicular to that, which will tell you whether you're integrating with respect to X or whether you're integrating with respect to Y. The region will help you determine your inner radius, outer radius, or just a single radius um, like in this example, um, and then the graph will also help you determine your bounds, the A, B, or the C, D, if you're doing it in terms of Y, okay? So you really have to draw the pictures in these um, particular problems. Again, you can use your graphing calculator to draw the image if you want to. I'm not required to see a graph. However, if your setup is not correct, most of the time it's because a student didn't draw a graph and had no conceptual idea of what exactly was going on. Okay, so I always like to draw the graphs. I'll, you'll always see me drawing the graphs and then trying to make sense of everything, okay? I'm gonna stop this as just the lecture video and I'll start doing the examples in a separate video.